And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today I'm talking about Magic Maze. Now, Magic Maze came, and it has a funny cover and all, and it's from Sit Down, and I probably should have jumped right on it, but honestly, I said Magic Maze, I looked at the tiles, I'm like, oh, it's another one of these games where you try to get out of a maze somehow by moving tiles or whatever, and I put it in the shelf, didn't think about it. Shoot ahead a little bit, I went to a convention, and there was someone there who said, have you played Magic Maze? And I said, well, no, not yet, and someone else said, you gotta play it, so I played it. Well, this was not what I expected. In this game, which has a bit of a fantasy setting, but it's a fantasy setting in a shopping mall, and each person is um, a barbarian, a dwarf, a, an elf, and a, and a wizard, and you were all trying to shoplift. You were trying to shoplift simultaneously, then get out of the mall without being caught. It's a cooperative, real-time game that, well, let me explain it, and then I'll tell you more about it. Now this game is going to be using a timer, so the timer will start the game. And then players are going to all be playing simultaneously. Each player is going to have a tile in front of them. All tiles are going to be facing the same direction, this little north arrow, so that you know exactly what each tile does. The tiles are going to be different based on the number of players. I'm showing you the tiles for a four player game. Now there are four pawns here, the barbarian, the wizard, the elf, and the dwarf, and each of them can be moved by any of the players. Your goal here is to get them to the spots where they need to steal things and then get them out the exit. So the way you're going to do that is whoever has this tile can always move pawns this direction. So they can move the green one this way, they can move the yellow one this way, pawns can't move through each other. The person who has this one can move pawns the other direction. The person who has this one can move pawns this way. So they can move this one here. The person who has this one can move pawns this way. They can move as far as you want in any direction. The person who has this one can also move a pawn up an escalator. So they can go up this escalator here. That's their special ability. The person who has this one can discover a new tile. You're going to have a pile of tiles here. And if the color, so this is the elf, if he's on the correct one here that shows that the elf can discover a new tile here, then when that happens, you'll draw the top tile here and you're going to place the incoming arrow next to where you, the discover. So you'll be placing it here. And you'll see that this shows a few new things. This person here can have someone teleport. Essentially, if they're on a portal of their own color, they can use this to warp to a portal of another color. So these are the three special things that players can do. And they're going to be continually turning these tiles over, looking for the items that need to be stolen. So this is where the, let's say, the yellow player, the yellow pawn here discovers this tile, then you're going to want to get them out of the way, get the green pawn there and on their spot. And once you've discovered all the spots, so let's say that I have made this bigger here and we managed to get everybody to their spots. Uh, there's none, of, oh, there's, there's the magicians, one that they're trying to get, and over here, and over here, and where's the arrow? Right there, there's the yellow one. So you can see everybody is on the spot that they have stealing. Once everyone is on their spot, they have to be there simultaneously, boom, you all steal. Then you need to get everyone out the exit and you need to do that before time runs out. Now you say, wow, it looks like time runs out pretty quickly. It does. However, if you ever land one of your pawns on the sand timer, you can flip the timer over. Actually, you must flip it over. So hopefully you'll do that right before time runs out. You'll then put a little X on this to show that you have to, that you can't use that time spot again. Also, players are not allowed to talk during the course of the game. So I can't tell you, hey, you need to explore a new tile, or hey, you need to move that pawn down. I can't do that. However, there is a take action now pawn, and you can put that in front of somebody, and you'll find that people will do this. That's their only form of communication, and if you get something in front of you like that, you are likely being told, move it now, move it now, move it now. All right. Once you land on a timer, though, and when you flip a timer over, everyone can stop, and you have some time to talk then. You can discuss what you're going to try to do. Usually you're going to, you know, it's pretty obvious. You get your items and then get out the exit. Um, but the problem is getting out the exit is not quite so easy because you're going to be running around and doing all different things and getting the people out, you know, moving them as quickly as you can 
once you've stolen everything, you flip this tile over and it shows that you can't use the teleporters anymore. So you're going to have to get out there. And so I'll move here. Then the person who moves down, then I'll move over. Then the person moves down. Then I'll move over. Now the person who moves up needs to move up. And that's only level one. In level two, you will shuffle in three more tiles. And now each person has to get out their own color exit. This is the exit for orange, exit for yellow, the exit for green, and the exit for purple. Then when you play other levels, other things will happen. You will have little walls here that only the dwarf can fit between those walls. And that's just another way to maneuver him around. And you also have different spots on the board where when the elf lands on those, you can talk. So the elf can allow people to talk. Then you can add the crystal ball tiles. And when a mage lands on these, on these crystal tile spots, that whenever someone's discovering a new tile, they can turn over two of them. You can also have security cameras, and when there's two, two, two or more security cameras active, you can't use a timer spot on the board till the barbarian moves to these and disables them. And then there's all sorts of other variations, and there's more tiles that you can add to the game to make it harder and longer. And like I said, you can play with fewer or less players. You're just going to give each person different sets of tiles, and maybe multiple people will have the same being able to move somebody down. If you manage to do all these things before the timer runs out at any given point, You've won. Otherwise, uh, try it again. This is one of the most pure fun games I've played in a really long time. This is just bonkers fun. In fact, the most, the last time I had bonkers fun like this was Captain Sonar. It has that same feel because you're sitting there and it's like, okay. And, and, and really, when you play this, you want to play level one, then two, then three. Just go up the levels. Don't start on a higher level. And also, I'm not sure you should play with more than five. I think with six, seven, eight, it's just too hard for everyone to fit around the table to see the board. But man, you're sitting there and you're like, okay. And you really only have one thing to do. You move up, then you move over. I mean, you move up, someone else moves over. So you're sitting there, okay, I need to do this, do this, do this. And you got to think ahead because you need the different colors to get to different tiles so that they can explore the next tile. And there's the spot you want to you want to uh, steal, so you move all the pieces there, but wait a minute, we need to explore more tiles, so someone has to get off and go and explore more, and oh, you're the person to move up the escalator. And you can't talk much during the game, you can talk when there is um, a back and forth, but you're going to be using this tile all the time, and it's, <laughs> people will be doing this in front of you, and you're like, what? what are they talking about? What am I missing? Oh, oh, I need to move that piece. And the timer there makes it so frenetic, and of course, you can flip the timer, and it's not so bad, right? It's not like you can't get the things done, but it's just like, you have your job to do, do your job. But then when you get to level three on the timer, there's a little sticker that shows you that every time you go into timer space and talk, you rotate all the tiles. So now instead of moving down and exploring new tiles, now I'm moving to the left and using escalators, which can be kind of a whole mind shift. You're like, whoa, okay, now I'm doing this now. All right, let's do it. And you plan it out and you do it and everyone's talking and saying, okay, we got to get this over here, then this here, and we need to move him here first before we can move this person there. And wow, it's fun. Not, it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea, right? It has that same kind of crazy energy that Project Elite and Escape and Fuse have. And if you notice, these are games that I add to my collection because I love it. But this one is cooperative working together. And one person can't tell everyone else what to do because most of the time, you're not allowed to talk. And that alpha gamer can be sitting there banging this in front of you, but at the same time, you can just take it and put bang it in front of them because they're missing the fact that they're supposed to be making the, the warrior go up the escalator. I like the theme. I like the idea everyone's shopping shop with. He's not a good thing, but it's silly, funny, you know, barbarians aren't a real thing either. And I like that you're doing this and I like how the levels go up and up. Some of those upper levels, impossible. How many levels are there? I believe there's 24 levels. No, there's 17. 17 levels. And then there's like a, a, a book here where you have challenges and you can keep in here and basically uh, talk about your scenarios, the, the great book of challenges and write in here how well you've done at them. And this goes from 17 to 24. So maybe there's, maybe there's more. Who knows? There's just a lot of fun things about this game. And you can change it up. But even just playing the base game over and over would be fun. But then adding in these extra rules and the game's really smart because it adds them in a little bit at a time. It's crazy. It is immensely hilarious. This one is immediately going in my collection. We'll do a live play of it at some point. And it's funny because it's quiet and yet loud at the same time because it's quiet and you're all doing this. But at the same time, it's like the timer's about to run out. You're the person who can move the dwarf onto a timer piece. Do it now. Ah, and your mind is not always going to be thinking the same as everyone else's. Great fun. It's going to be probably too stressful for a few people. 
but do not pass this one by. This is one of my favorite games I've played this year already, actually. I really, really like it. High recommendation from me, Magic Maze. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent hilarity! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boop. Boop.